Both these players at 11 and 2. A win here may very well lock one up for top eight. Oh, absolutely. With only one round to go, and with X3 being a mortal lock, I cannot assume that this is not a true and blue winning in. Yeah. Good. The loser of this match may even be able to draw next round, but it's going to be a tight cut. We'll find out. Tom Ross is on the play. Here's a Legion's landing on turn one. Over to Donegan. He'll shotgun a breeding pool. Here's Land War Elves. Donegan at 18. Both players kind of doing what they want to do on the first turn of the game. See what the follow ups are. Vampire token comes across. Donegan will fall to 17 off that. Tom Ross to 21. Yeah, notably, uh, the Lenore Elf not trading for the Vampire here. Um, Dylan Donian taking a bit of a gamble, needing that extra mana, putting a lot of value on it. Uh, basically saying, hey, I hope you don't have two one-drops, but even if you do, the Lenore Elves is extremely valuable to me. Turn two for Tom Ross was a Danto Vanguard on Donegan's side. A tapped breeding pool and a wild growth walker, hoping to make that one large on the following turn. Yeah, a follow-up Jade Light Ranger would be huge for Donegan, really padding his life total and giving him a significantly large blocker to put in front of that Danto Vanguard or some other creature. And for Tom, he's going to attack with a Danto Vanguard for three. Pretty easy attack to make. He'd be really happy if he got a block. That's not going to happen. Donegan's at 14. Yeah. Uh, he's going to take the three hit here. Uh, Tom going to follow that up with a history of Benalia really applying that pressure. Let's see what Donegan's follow-up is. A really powerful one, two, three curve for Tom Ross. Donegan will untap with that Wild Growth Walker. Can he start doing some exploring or do something to clean up this battlefield? Yeah. No black mana just yet, notably. Yeah, well, there's a swamp from Donegan, so he's unlocked all of his colors. He has the powerful Jade Light Ranger. He's going to go all the way back up to 20, and you have to think this one really hurts from Tom Ross's side. And Cast Down is the top card here. Donegan thinking about what he wants to do with that one. Yeah, and this is a really tough decision. If he needs land, you know, he's going to have to put that one in the graveyard and hope for the best. And he hit an Overgrown Tomb. Cast Down also not particularly good against a Danto Vanguard, and that card is the one that's really giving him a bit of trouble right now. Tom Ross is going to have to get rid of this Wild Growth Walker if he wants to get in any damage this turn. Back on Ross's side, Chapter 2 of that History of Benalia. See what he wants to do as far as attacks this turn. The Wild Growth Walker being a 3-5 now has blunted his assault quite a bit. Right. Now, if Tom has Conclave Tribunal, though, things start to open up a bit. Let's see if he has it. And these are the situations where it's just such a beat that your opponent is literally Tom Ross. If anybody's <laughs> going to navigate the situation well, it's Tom. Yeah, he's going to figure out the best line. Uh, roughly 90% or more of the time. He's going to go for a Benelch Marshall. That's going to pump up his squad Let's see if he has a follow-up. Conclave Tribunal, there it is. Tapping all of his creatures except for the Adonto Vanguard and swinging in for four points of damage. Let's see if Donegan wants to offer up the Jade Light Ranger. May just take four. He is still at 20 here. Yeah, and with the capability of trading with a Banalsh Marshal next turn or one of those really strong knight tokens with the History of Benalia popping off, I can't imagine he's willing to trade four points of life for that 3-2 body. Donegan fell to 16. Draw for turn was Hostage Taker. He'll deploy Ooh, that. Grab baby. that Marshall. That is a nice one. Play that Overgrown Tomb that he got off the Ranger tapped, and we'll go back Ross's way. Hostage Taker is so strong against these white base aggressive decks. Not only can it just cold a token Ravenous Chupacabra style, but in situations where your opponent doesn't have the removal spell, you can get one of their really powerful cards like Venerated Luxodon sometimes even, or that Banalish Marshall that pumps up all of your stuff. And then Lanor also becomes a real addition to your team. Chapter 3 for the history of Banalia. So those knight tokens are four threes for this turn. They will attack as well as the Adanto Vanguard. Donegan's going to throw that Jade Light Ranger in front of something. Now, if he has a finality in hand um, and what needs to draw a land, he may opt to just block a Danto Vanguard. But his plan last turn involved Hostage Taker, so I have to assume he's going to trade here instead of just making Tom Ross pay that for life, and he does. Yeah, block was on Night Token. Seven points came across. Donegan to nine. Follow-up for Tom Ross. It's another Legion's Landing. Has that Adanto at the ready. Ooh, baby, and that finality is going to clean things up nicely. Now it's a hostage taker with a Banalsh Marshal underneath it, facing down an Adanto the first fort, and Tom's out of gas. Let's see what he draws. And uh, wisely no attacks for Donegan there, only one toughness left over. Didn't want to walk that into this vampire token, but Ross needs to do some work resetting here. 
Yeah, that's also another really important part of why Hostage Taker is making its way into these Soul Tide decks over uh, arguably the more consistent Ravenous Chupacabra. Hostage Taker is a bit dangerous because the ability allows for the opponent to occasionally kill it and undo that effect, but in matchups where your opponent can't, being able to cast that creature later on is a big deal. And here we're seeing it even survives finality when you put the counters on it where Chupacabra would have died. Draw for Tom Ross was History of Banalia, maybe the best card in the deck, though he's really far behind at this point in time. We'll see Don again cast that Benelish Marshal, play an Incubation Druid, and he's just content to pass. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of pressure coming here from Tom, though, now, since he drew that History of Banali off the top. He's going to threaten a, a swing for a roughly 10 damage next turn outside of what Tom uh, could be presenting here. Yeah. Back on Ross' side, he's drawn for turn. He made that second Knight token, but all he can do is pass. His creatures will be a lot larger on the following turn. So we go to Don again. Here's a big tap. Uh, Donigan has another finality in hand, as well as the ability to pump that Incubation Druid. I'm curious how he's going to play this turn. He's probably just going to hold back a lot of creatures on defense, try to uh, fight through this uh, uh, big attack here next turn from that History of Benali at Chapter 3. And he's going to go in the tank here with that Wild Growth Walker. Decides to leave it on top. Yeah, Merfolk Branch Walker leaving Wild Growth Walker on top. And Donegan has another fine finality in hand. Yeah, this is looking pretty bad for the boss. Uh, that Incubation Druid can enter into combat and choose as a declared blocker on one of the knight tokens. And then he can spend five mana, four plus the uh, tapping itself, to put three counters on it, and notably five toughness, which gets over those four power knights. Back to Tom Ross. Chapter three for History of Banalia, though there's a lot in the way of good blockers for Don again. Tom Ross draws for turn, needs some good ones. Looking like he's trying to line up attacks right now. Donegan has a lot of material that either just is a good blocker, that 4-5 or five hostage taker, or just expendable creatures. Yeah, and the Banosh Marshal means that we're basically getting in no damage here. Tom is trying to line up attacks, but even with the Chapter 3 of History of coming down, uh, the Hostage Taker has 6 toughness. The Incubation Druid can get up to 6 toughness as well with the adaptability. Even the uh, Merfolk Branch Walker is 4-3 uh, and can eat one of those Vampire Tokens. I don't see a good attack for Tom. Even with a Conclave Tribunal, I think this might be, uh, this might be it. At least for Game 1. Mm -hmm. you know, Ross is trying to squeak out any edge that he can, just kind of lining up how blocks might look, but... Your opponent at nine, just playing a mono white deck. It, it's tough to break through this amount of blockers. Oh, looks like he drew Unbreakable Formation. He's right. going to start with a Tithe Taker. Unbreakable Formation is going to pump all of his creatures, giving them a counter with that addendum ability. And they have Vigilance and Indestructible. Well, that makes attacking a lot easier anyway. Yeah, everything has Vigilance. Everything can, can attack and should. And uh, the uh, uh, Danto First Fort being transformed uh, from the uh, Legion's landing. I think this is just a clean block, though, for, for Donegan. He's going to trade, uh, you know, or he's going to have a 4-3 Merfolk Branch Walker that eats a 2-2, two -two, uh, but, you know, the creatures are indestructible, so nothing is really happening that's, that's bad for, for Dylan Donegan. Yeah, and Donegan actually couldn't adapt the Druid oh. there because of the Tithe Taker, so that one does get eaten in combat. Tom got him good. <laughs> he got him good. But there's finality. <laughs> yep. And Not can, good enough. Yeah. And, ooh, and that just pumps the marshal, too. That's yep. so brutal. Yeah, there is going to be uh, one token left over here from uh, from Tom Ross's side of things, though. Uh, thanks to that Tide Taker's uh, afterlife ability, the Orzhov mechanic really showing off here in the face of that finality. And with Hostage Taker, uh, Hostage Taker being the only creature of these two that can really attack without the, the spear token actually being able to block and eat it. And Donakin just ships back. Yeah, nine life, I think he knows that all of his life points are, are precious. Attack for one with that spear token, Donakin at eight, and a Snubhorn Century. One, two, three, eight permanents currently, though an active Adanto makes that City's Blessing pretty quickly. Right. But Dylan Donning has got a really big follow-up coming here. A Hydroid Crisis. If it looks somewhere around five, going to gain him a few points of life. Generate a pretty big flyer. 
Big tap for Donegan. It's the Krasis. X equals five. Yeah, and then still the Benoche Marshall, the stole off the hostage taker, makes it a 6-6 six, six flyer. So I think we're going to be crashing in here for quite a bit of damage. Yeah, hostage taker coming across. That's a five power creature right now. Tom Ross, plenty of life. He's at 25. He's going to take that and then make a vampire token. We'll go back his way. That Krasis being a flyer, that blunts the only assault that Ross really had going. Yeah, and uh, you're really starting to see why the Soul Time mid-range deck is splashing blue. This Hydroid Krasis is effectively the only reason, at least in the main deck, access to those sideboard counter spells like Negate and Disdainful Stroke, though, also just make it so much more appealing. So Ross is going to go ahead and make that Vampire token, get the City's Blessing while he knows it's good. Yeah. Pass things back, no attacks on this board. That's mostly for potential double block purposes, because if he waits, Dylan Donningham can actually bust it up with uh, some removal spell and uh, negate the, the plus three power from the Snubhorn. But Donningham turning things sideways here, coming across with that big hostage taker. It's at five power right now, thanks to the two counters from the first finality, as well as the Banalish Marshal. And then we also got a 6-6 six, six Hydro Crashes coming in. Not much you can do about the Crassus, though a vampire will jump in front of the hostage taker. So six in the air, one life link off the chump blocker. Ross should be going to 15. And Vivian Reed, the follow-up for Donegan. Ooh, give me that wild growth walker back, and how about another one? Oh, looks like Tom has seen enough. He's going to pack them in. A pair of wild growth walkers there at the end, along with that just overwhelming board presence, and that's going to be uh, too much for Tom to handle. Yeah, and those walkers, when they start as two fours, they're just even more threatening for a deck like Mono White Aggro. And, you know, kind of insurmountable edge that Duncan already <laughs> had before he cast them. Right. All right, well, let's take a look at the sideboards here as we try to deduce how both players are going to approach this particular matchup after sideboard. So for uh, Tom Ross, he is down a game now. The sideboard here, he has four Baffling End, four Takatli Honor Guard. Uh, this is pretty much the matchup. Those are four. Yes. you got to like having those. Three Johnny Adversary of Tyrants, two Adanto Vanguard, and two Demissify. What's Tom going to do here? All right. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, there is the kind of complete transformational sideboard, so to speak, where we bring in Takatli Honor Guard, Baffling End, a Johnny, and a Danto Vanguard because a Danto Vanguard can attack through those uh, cheap explore creatures that Dylan Donegan can put up. Um, and if he goes that route, he's going to have to shrink a lot of his creature base uh, because his main deck has very uh, few things other than um, creatures uh, to cut. And every time you cut a creature and replace it with a non-creature like Baffling End or Johnny, you're making things like Legion's Landing and even Benalish Marshall uh, quite a bit worse. So uh, Takali on guard, 100% coming in. And then I'm on the fence about basically everything else. I think uh, Donald Vanguard can come in pretty easily as well. But, um, I mean, there's give and take for the rest of it. And over on Dylan Donegan's side of things, his sideboard is four duress, three negate, two plague crafter, two cast down, two midnight reapers, a cry of the carnarium, and an assassin's trophy. All right, on uh, this matchup, Dylan needs to... Uh, sideboard very little, but he needs to make sure he has the right answers for Takotli Honor Guard. That card shuts down all of his uh, Explorer, which can affect his mana development. It also uh, knocks off Wild Growth Walker in, in the same process. So those two cast downs 100% coming in. Cry of the Cardinarium, especially on the draw for Game 2, can be a good way for him to stifle the early development that Tom's uh, Mono White Aggro deck is presenting, as well as clean up a, a really powerful draw featuring multiple copies of a Danto Vanguard. Uh, your spell removal doesn't work against those too well, but Cry of the Cardinarium as well as Finality, uh, Finality take care of them quite easily. Um, I'm not 100% on, on Assassin's Trophy, but being able to knock off some of those enchantments that exile your important cards uh, may be a reason to, to bring it in. We're in the penultimate round of things here. One more Swiss round after this before we get to the top eight. The uh, standard open here at SCG Dallas. So you're watching live. You know that. You're on twitch.tv. Tour. And uh, we would love it if you would subscribe to our page. And you get to vote on the quarterfinals. We're coming up on those elimination rounds. You get to pick the matchup you want to see. And there's looking to be a pretty diverse field in the top eight. Look, you're watching this on Twitch right now. You know how subscriptions work. You should also know how Twitch Prime works. If you have Amazon Prime 
All it, all it takes is just a minute or two to connect your Twitch account with your Amazon Prime account, and that will give you one free subscription uh, every month. And we would love it, and we'd appreciate it a lot if you gave it to us. And along with that subscription, uh, you don't get commercials other than the ones that uh, we sponsor You know, via our sponsors. You don't get Twitch commercials. You also get to decide the quarterfinal match, as Ryan said. Uh, and honestly, when, when you get to pick your match, it feels like you're a part of the broadcast, and we like you all to feel like you are. Uh, along with that, though, you get some custom uh, emoticons as well as badges, uh, one of which is Roll Todd, which is me. And I would love it if you all spammed it in the chat. It's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world because somebody thought I was cool enough to make me an emoji. Yeah, you are, man. You earned that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, the SCG Tour. Join the feature match area today, twitch.tv slash SCG Tour. Yeah, for non-Prime members, it's only $4.99 a month. Those benefits are really nice. And this is uh, shaping up to be a really cool and dynamic standard format. So that quarterfinal voting, you get to pick what you want to see as you look at decks for picking coming down the pipeline. I know in a couple weeks we have a mythic championship coming up. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, I do want to say this, too, uh, going back to the, the Twitch subscription program, right? Uh, this is not the only thing we do here on Twitch.tv slash SCG Tour. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Ross Merriman and myself, we do Versus Live. And that's here on this uh, same channel. And uh, any of the benefits that you get from subscribing to the SCG Tour, you also get the same uh, benefits for, for uh, Versus Live. Uh, you won't get commercials, and you get all those sweet emojis, including the Roll Todd. Yeah, you can watch Todd Anderson put Ross Merriam against the ropes. Watch the Woo. misery on Ross's face <laughs> as Dude. you spam those Roll Todd emotes in the oh, chat. No. We've, uh, we've got to a point where Ross uh, brought his, and I, I kid you not, his dad's marbles. <laughs> his mom sent home a jar of marbles because at some point his mom was watching Versus Live and said, and Ross said, this one's for all the marbles. So she sent him a jar of his dad's marbles. And now they're in... Uh, in our uh, uh, little uh, f filming room uh, studio, there's the word I couldn't think of for some reason, um, and they're just sitting behind Ross, and they've been there for like three weeks straight, and I feel embarrassed by it. The Merriams are a very literal clan. Yeah, not a lot of... Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna like uh, attribute, you know, or, or uh, uh, expound on that. Instead, it's, it's just, all right there. You're just right. <laughs> Sometimes you're right. Yeah. Uh, both players here gearing up for game two. Dylan Donigan up a game with a Sultai mid range deck against Tom Ross's mono white aggro. Donigan on a mulligan looks like to six. Let's see if he can find a six that he likes. Yeah, mulliganing on the draw against a deck like mono white aggro can put you in a pretty precarious position. Notably, Sultai mid range is the kind of deck in the format that people play that lets you use Llanowar Elves to turn the tide in that kind of situation. Right, and when you're on the play, Llanowar Elves is uh, an accelerant. And when you're on the draw, it lets you match your opponent's speed. And in that effect, uh, when you're ramping into things like Vivian Reed, Carnage Tyrant, Hydroid Crisis, uh, you know, you, you really get paid off for hitting all those extra land drops. Both players ready to go here. Yeah, Donegan keeps on six, cries to the top, and Tom Ross will start things off with a Dauntless Bodyguard. Yep. Shock and a land or elf from Dylan Donegan's side. And I'm curious to see if he's willing to trade for this 2-1 or not. And uh, kind of depending if Ross has a Legion's Landing or not, Ross may not even offer the trade in some spots. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, with the Mulligan especially, there's a good chance that he actually needs this mana. And you see right there, Donegan taking that swing, and uh, he's crossing his fingers that there's no one drop and a Legion's Landing. Well, there's not that, but uh, there's a Takali Honor Guard. And that one is pretty scary for Donegan. He does have black mana, though, so if he has one of those Assassin's Trophies or Cast Downs, next turn he could potentially take care of the Honor Guard and still cast a Merfolk Branch Walker. But until he gets it off the battlefield, it's going to stifle his development significantly, including that really powerful Wild Growth Walker he has on his side of the battlefield. In the battle of 1-3 creatures, Honor Guard has a significant edge. Right, but as you can see, the 1-3 body from Wild Growth Walker is playing a huge role in this game. Tom deploying more threats. None of them can safely attack through Wild Growth Walker. All right, here is uh, Woodland Cemetery and another walker for Don again, but no additional action. Back to Tom Ross, who uh, added Legion's Landing and Hunted Witness to his board last turn. Yeah, no third land, though. Hits her Benalia not coming online just yet. Tom's got to figure out a way 
to start attacking and applying pressure to Donigan because if you give him too much time, he's eventually going to find a finality or a way to deal with that to Kotli Honor Guard. And then come the Jade Light Rangers and those big bursts of three points of life and with two Wild Growth Walkers in play. It's a bit curious that Donigan tapped all of his black mana to cast that second Wild Growth Walker. You think he's trying to bluff? No. Uh, I think that he's just like representing that he doesn't have it or he's trying to make Ross think he doesn't have it and has a plan to cast it next turn. Not really clear what the read is here. I mean, that's certainly true, but I mean, if you're Donegan, there's no reason to not hold it up if you have it. If your opponent goes land into Banos Marshall, swing with everything, you want to get that huge blowout with cast down on the Banos Marshall plus block, block, block. Yeah. It could just be that Donegan doesn't have and he's a bit frustrated about the situation as Baffling End will take care of his Land War Elves. That's innocuous. You know, he could bluff it, but if he doesn't have it, there's very little harm in bluffing it. It's not really going to change what Tom does too much. He's still going to play Benash Marshall, and he's still going to force him to have it. Woodland Cemetery to play for Donegan. Back over to Tom Ross. 2 one threes versus a field of similarly mopey creatures. Yeah, I mean, and this has really shown off just why Wild Growth Walker's in the deck. It's not even online, but it's gaining so much virtual life by stifling all of these one toughness creatures and keeping them from being able to attack. Here's a breaker, though. Benelish Marshall's a play. Big attack for Ross. Four coming across. Four creatures, rather. And Legion's Landing will transform into the first fort. Uh, Donigan looks like he's backing up. He has some plays pre-combat. It's going to be cast down on the Marshall. Ooh, an Assassin's Trophy and Baffling End. That'll get him a little dinosaur for his squad. Yeah, and this is all with the Legion's Landing trigger on the stack. For one mana, Tom could have some trickery, so Donigan just trying to make sure that n nothing goes uh, terribly wrong. We get a 3-3 three, three dinosaur. Uh, please just tell him. Can you tell him to put a Todd Anderson token into play? Please? <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! yes! <laughs> Doing it! <laughs> Todd Anderson's going to block that honor guard. And the Wild Ghost Walker is going to jump in front of the Dauntless Bodyguard and the Haunted Witness. Huge swing in Donegan's favor here. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> All right, well, this is uh, this is the blocks being lined up. That Takali Honor Guard going to get eaten by me. I'm numb. <laughs> uh, the Hunted Witness is going to get blocked. Instead of the Vampire Token, which I think is important because it signifies that Donegan uh, wants to make sure that very few creatures were able to survive a finality in a turn or two. Yeah, just the Vampire poking through, and the follow-up for Ross is just a Hunted Witness. Over on Donegan's side, he is light, just an Overgrown Tomb tapped, and uh, just one card left over. Tom Ross is going to play a fifth plane, and he just has to pass back. A, uh, remember what you said about him bluffing not having the two-mana removal spell? And then on the following turn, he played two of them. Dylan you were some absolutely kind of right. Yeah. He, you know, and I don't even mean that in a mean way. He's he's a normal genius, not a brain genius. Right, actual genius. Yeah, just he has been on it. Yesterday I watched him play a couple of games when he was on camera, just killing it, and it's glad to see him back in form. It's been a while since I've seen him in, a, in the elimination rounds, and it looks like he may get there today. And he's adding Jay Light Ranger to this squad, those walkers. That honor guard's dead. Todd ate it. Now <laughs> Those are giant. Donegan's going to gain a ton of life, 12 coming off that. Three three power creatures now attacking Tom Ross. Yeah, and this is where the Sultai decks really start to turn the corner. You can see these Wild Growth Walkers are doing double duty for the first half of the game, playing a savage amount of defense, and right now they're going to start attacking and really starting to threaten Tom's life total. Donegan up to 27 off of those Walker triggers. Tom Ross looking at some blocks. Uh, is this four creatures on the dinosaur? Really, Tom? You hate me that much? <laughs> Rude? It's going to trade with three of them, just Hunted Witness left behind. Yep, and uh, I don't think that Donigan is in the mood for um, uh, casting finality anytime soon. Uh, he has a, a jade light, or sorry, he has a, a branch walker on top, which it can grow the two wild growth walkers that are on the battlefield, uh, and he's just going to use all all the pieces of the buffalo here. Draws a land off the branch walker and starts turning things sideways. Yep. Big attack, now four power walkers and that four power jade light ranger. All that Ross was able to do last turn was cast a tithe taker. Yeah, and here you actually see him kind of throwing away, so to speak, this jade light ranger. Uh, it's attacking into these uh, creatures with second lives. Tom's able to gang block and kill it, but that's actually going to turn on the other half of Find Finality and let him start getting creatures back from the graveyard once they die in combat. And that's going to continue to grow the wild growth walkers 
pad Donigan's life total, and put Tom Ross in a precarious position. And it's not just fine finality. He's going to shock for Watery Grave because he just has Memorial to Folly. Right. Just He always wants to save that finality just in case. Just in case Tom hits a string of history banalia into history banalia into yada yada. But in this particular scenario, it looks like Tom's on the back foot and as a mono white low to the ground aggressive deck, it's going to be tough sledding. Let's see if he can make it. There is a history in Ross's hand, though. He just has really, he has a 1 1 flyer and a hunted witness against a team of two four power creatures. Memorial to follow face up on the table. That's going to pick up the Jade Light Ranger, most likely. And that's the floor of what Donegan can do. Yeah, and without something like Takali Honor Guard, that Jade Light Ranger uh, kind of looks like, you know, two, uh, two explore triggers, which in turn equals 12 life. And as we have seen, Mono White Aggro, it can put out some uh, pretty big chunks of damage. But when you're this low on resources like Tom is, I don't know if it's going to be enough. The Spirit will knock Donegan to a comfortable 30. Yikes. <laughs> About to go to 42 next turn. Not bad. And Ross is making the attacks he has. You know, you don't, you don't win by blocking. Yes. But well, sometimes you do. Yeah, that's true. Donegan may have won by blocking when he used that dinosaur on that honor guard. Yeah, that was a nice turn. Dauntless bodyguard joins the team. I got to say, you really called it. That is not something that I thought that Dylan was going to do. And the next turn, Tom just unsuspectingly gets obliterated by two removal spells. When somebody good as Dylan and Donegan does something like tap off of all their black mana but leave up mana that could cast a removal spell, you got to take notice of that stuff. Yeah. I don't know what Tom Ross could have done about it, but really cool play by Donegan. And there was the Memorial of Folly on Jade Light Ranger. That's going to show up again. Those Wild Growth Walkers now up to six power creatures. All right, Tom going to line up some blocks here. Hunted Witness on the Branch Walker. And it uh, looks like a couple of chump blocks. The Dolph's Bodyguard was protecting the Vampire Token, I'm guessing. That's why he did it on his main phase, so he could do that. Uh, so, effectively, the Dolph's Bodyguard was able to trade plus a life against those two large Wild Growth Walkers. So Ross doing what he can to tread water. Just to land our elves to follow up for Donegan. So no huge swings in his favor, though I believe I have a spot of fine finality in his hand. Yeah, I mean, the, f the fine finality is uh, obviously just good to have on, on backup. But at such a high life total, such a dominating board presence, there's really no need to cast it just yet. He's going to continue growing these Wild Growth Walkers. Finds another Jade Light Ranger. Uh, he's going to get two explorers and kind of dig deeper to find Hydro Crisis and things of that nature. Uh, he just doesn't really need it. He just has it all. Spirit knocked down again to 41. Jade Light Ranger is going to change that. Life total now 53. Draws a land and keeps a cast down on top. Big attack. Everything coming across. Ross will activate that Adanto. Line up some blockers. Yeah, you know you're ahead when your Llanowar Elves is attacking into an Adanto the First Fort. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You're, you're doing okay. Tom decides to gang block a little bit on the Jade Light Ranger to, to clear uh, the battlefield a little bit. He's just trying to get as much value as he can from Adanto the First Fort. He's been doing some work. He's been so far behind this whole game, and he's still at 17 life tapped overgrown tomb for Donegan and he has no need to be aggressive with that find. He could have picked up a couple explore creatures there but that card is just worth a lot and he's very far ahead. Oh absolutely. And Tom Ross here in the tank. He has a history of Benali in hand uh, but if he doesn't have the land to cast it and activate the Adanto he's basically just treading water. The 2-2 is effectively in chump block mode but here's a play and maybe this is the one that can get him back in this game. Yeah, Johnny Adversary of Tyrants that's going to minus two and put the Tithe Taker back on the battlefield. That's good for two blocks. Donnegan is going to start this turn. Now he's going to use the find, pick up two explore creatures. Here's Jade Light Ranger. Wild Growth Walkers are going to end up as ten power creatures. Draws a forest and another Wild Growth Walker. That one's going to go to the graveyard. No need to draw that. And here Donnegan padding his life total by another 12 points. Cast down to kill the token and attack for lethal. Donnegan takes it. 12-2 and two with one round to go. He's going to be in our elimination rounds today here at SCG Dallas. And we've had Don again on camera a few times this